Hi guys, welcome to day two. Uh, today we are going to learn about the characteristics of life and what makes something living. All right, so the first characteristic we're going to talk about is growth. All living things have to grow, um, but they're going to grow differently. If I'm a unicellular organism, which means I'm just one cell, I'm only going to grow by that single cell getting a little bit larger. However, if I'm a multicellular organism, which is made of lots of different cells like humans. Um, the reason that we grow is because our cells divide. So our cells are dividing and that's what makes us bigger. So two ways to grow, either by cells getting larger or cells dividing. The next characteristic we have is movement. So living things have to move, um, which might seem a little bit confusing sometimes because we think about plants and do plants actually move? Um, well, they do. So they can move towards light. Um, they move water and sugar inside their bodies. Um, so all living things actually do move, even though some stages might be not moving. So we have internal movement, which is the movement of substances throughout their body, um, like water moving from, in a plant, moving from the root all the way up to the leaves. Um, and then we have what you typically think of, which is when we talk about movement, which is external movement like walking, flying, swimming, um, all of those are examples of movement as well. Um, the next characteristic that we're going to talk about is eating. So all organisms have to get nutrition um, through either making their own food or consuming um, food from other organisms. So if you're autotrophic, those are the organisms that make their own food, like plants. Um, they use sunlight and carbon dioxide and they are able to make their own food. Um, whereas if you're heterotrophic, that means you get your food from eating other organisms. So we eat plants, we eat animals, therefore we are heterotrophic. Um, so anything that makes its own food, autotrophic, anything that has to eat something else is heterotrophic. And there's a few organisms that actually can be both, and I'm sure you guys can um, at least think of one, Venus flytrap. The next part of the eating is metabolism. So once you actually consume that food or you make that food, um, there are some chemical reactions that go on in the body. Um, and what needs to happen is that if you eat a sandwich, okay, that's a pretty large food particle, and you start to break it up in your mouth and then in your stomach and small intestines continues to break that down. Um, and they do that in order to absorb those smaller pieces. So all those chemical reactions that go into breaking that food down is called metabolism. So you need to know that term. Metabolism is all the chemical reactions that are happening inside the body. All right, in order to be considered living, organisms have to be able to reproduce. Um, and we have two different types of reproduction. We have asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Um, asexual reproduction is with one parent, and you're going to create an exact copy, a clone. Um, whereas sexual reproduction, it involves two parents to create one organism, and that's how you're going to get a lot of your diversity. A stimulus is something that causes a response. So in the morning when you wake up and turn on the light, your body goes, ah, it's so light. Um, you're responding to that light. Um, if I throw ice water on you, you're like, oh, that's so cold, and you might start shivering. You're responding to temperature. Um, but all living things actually respond to stimuli, even... Um, Let's take a plant. How would a plant respond to stimuli? If you put a light, it's going to grow towards that light. All right, guys, we're getting it. We're almost done. We have two more left. So the next one is all living organisms have to exchange gases within the environment. So um, organisms that undergo photosynthesis, they need carbon dioxide to create food, not pho, but food, um, and cellular respiration. Um, during cellular respiration, organisms can use oxygen, and in doing so, they're going to break down that food that they created or that they, in, that they took in um, in order to create energy. So photosynthesis and cellular respiration both are ways that we exchange gases within the environment. Okay, we're at the end. The last characteristic of life is that living things have to excrete. Um, and basically what that means is that we've got to get rid of our waste. Um, otherwise it becomes toxic. And we do that in order to maintain homeostasis. 
Homeostasis is a very important vocab word here in biology. It is very important that you know it. And what that means is that you maintain an internal balance despite what's going on outside, externally. So think about your body temperature. It can be really, really hot outside or really, really cold, and your body temperature stays around 98.6 or somewhere around that. But it doesn't really matter if it's really, really hot or really, really cold. Your body knows how to maintain that temperature, and that is called homeostasis.